You have to think in a different way to get to the level of an icon. And your fees should be, should be tied to the value that you offer, not the hours you work. It takes a bit of courage to get around that idea. I can tell you now that I struggle with it, but it is important to struggle with it and to win. Amateurs sell a product, experts model an ideal. We get so caught up in the serious side of running a business, the nuts and bolts of making a process happen, that we sometimes lose sight of the humanity on the other end. People don't come to us to buy a product. They come to us because they see themselves living a certain life. People like Nigella Lawson understand that. I watched an interview by Time Magazine the other day in which they asked her, what's your inspiration? You know, what, what gets you going? And in this candid moment, she explained that when she was about 16 years old, she had this romantic idea in her mind about an Italian goddess. And she says she doesn't know why, but that just appealed for her, that just worked for her. And that picture, that ideal, has driven everything she has done since then. Now you can see it in everything she does. Who does your target market want to be? What outcome do they envisage for themselves? What is their ideal life and can you guide them to it? That's how you become the guru, or as Seth Godin would say, uh, the leader of a tribe of believing followers. It's sharing that lifestyle, showing them how to be who they want to be. The acid test for this one is this. Instead of thinking of it in terms of tribes of followers that you're growing, think of it in terms of one ideal person. Who's your ideal customer? Think of an avatar for the person that you want to appeal to. Now here's the, the difficult test and it's quite a cruel audit for us as aspiring experts. Could that person get everything that they need to become who they want to be from you alone? If not, there are more books to be written. If not, there are more YouTube channels to be opened. If not, there are more articles to be written and so on and so forth. Take that ideal person, that avatar, who's trying to become what you're showing them how to be. Can they get it all from you? If not, you're leaving money on the table and thought leadership opportunities unanswered. Idea number three. Amateurs conform to the tone, experts change everything. What's the tone? What's the norm? What are the minimum expected levels in your industry? What if you brought such unexpected excellence to an area that doesn't see it coming that you changed the game? Could you do that? What if you changed the tone and became an industry leader as a result? Could you out-care the competition? Idea number four. Amateurs slap on photos, experts craft a narrative. These days we're pretty much all on social media, or at the very least we're using some kind of visual to make our ideas come alive for people. You can say the same thing in vastly different ways, and I think most businesses in South Africa, most aspiring brands and experts, don't really see how much you can do with this idea. We all know that Bill Gates started Microsoft in his garage. If you go onto the Microsoft website, that's not the first thing you're going to see. That kind of charming, human, humble origin story is fantastic for when they interview you on CNN. It is wrong for your visuals. Idea number five, experts add a unique signature. What is so different about you that people turn to one another and say, that was really awesome? I came across uh, this little meme on, on social media the other day. I have no idea what they sell. It could be timeshare, it could be holidays, it could be donuts, it could be yellow paint, I have no idea. But if you walk past that, wouldn't you have to know? There's something special going on there. There's a little bit of art, there's a bit of poetry. There is some attention to detail that says there's something special going on here. It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of thought if your heart is in it. What are your current touch points with your clients? What are your current touch points with your market? Are you losing opportunities there by not doing something memorable?